Hi, I'm Morgan Jones, and you are watching another night of Deseret Book Live. Welcome back to night three of Deseret Book Live, where for a little bit of time each night, we're trying to help take your mind off of the worries and concerns associated with the coronavirus. If you're like me, you just want to feel like a normal human right now. And thanks to you, these jeans are really helping me feel that way. But hopefully last night, the virtual game night helped you feel like you were just having a good time with friends. And tonight, we've got a very special treat for you because we have a fireside with John Hilton. Now, before you get concerned that you're going to have to sit for a long time, it's only a short fireside. We call it a five minute fireside. Really, it's about eight minutes, but you're going to love what John has to share. He is the author of the new book, Founder of Our Peace, which is all about drawing upon the power of Jesus Christ and the word of God to ease our worries and concerns in times of stress or fear. And I don't know about you, but for me personally, this time with the coronavirus has been kind of scary. I tested positive on the same day that Rudy Gobert and Tom Hanks tested positive for the coronavirus. I tested positive for mononucleosis. Now, I know what you're thinking. Mono, not usually a very scary thing, but when you know that your immune system is not what it should be, it can be really scary. And for me, it kind of was, and I felt almost paralyzed by that fear. But I love that what John offers tonight in his fireside allows us to feel a little bit more that that this fear and anxiety that we're feeling, that there's something we can do about it. He offers practical application for how to ease those worries and those fears. And so I think you'll love what he has to offer. So sit back, relax, enjoy his fireside, and be sure to stick around afterward because we have another exciting giveaway. At this difficult time, you, like so many of us, are probably experiencing some type of disappointment, discouragement, fear, worry, anxiety, depression. Some of us face really serious challenges, even the death of a loved one. Others of us are facing less similar situations, like my wife and I. This spring is our 20th wedding anniversary, and for the past year, we've been planning a special trip to Jerusalem. Now we'll probably just be quarantined together. And honestly, that's not the end of the world, but still, it's a little bit of a disappointment for us. I'm sure you're experiencing some disappointments as well. What I've come to learn is that all of us can, through the teachings of Jesus Christ, find greater peace. My name is John Hilton, and this is my five minute fire sign. Peace has been hard to pin down since ancient times. Jacob, the grandson of Abraham, the scriptures say he was greatly afraid and distressed. Helaman and the stripling warriors, they were filled with fear. Pahoran was worried about political conditions in his day. Corianton, Alma's son, was worried about the doctrine of the church. Lehi had anxiety. Jacob describes himself as having over-anxiety. Worry, fear, depression, anxiety. These are real scriptural words used in the scriptures to describe our scriptural heroes. If you felt these feelings, you are not alone. Peace has always been elusive, and it seems like recently it's become even harder. About 30 years ago, President Ezra Taft Benson said, We live in that time in which the Lord spoke when he said, Peace shall be taken from the earth. Now, it's true that finding peace isn't easy, but there is a way to find peace. In Mosiah chapter 15, the prophet Abinadi was speaking to a group of people who were very hostile to him, King Noah and his priests. As Abinadi was talking to them, explaining the power of Jesus Christ, he used this phrase to describe the Savior the founder of peace. I love that phrase, the founder of peace. There are many ways to find peace in Christ. Today, I wanna to share just two. Let me maybe introduce them with the story. In 2007, during a previous national crisis, my wife and I faced our own crisis. We had felt impressed by the spirit to move to another state, but because of the housing issues, our home had dropped dramatically in value. To make matters worse, my employer told me that if we moved, we would, I would lose my employment. I was filled with fear. To make matters worse, I developed some health problems. So I started obsessing about what the future would hold. Let's be honest, sometimes the miracle we're praying for doesn't happen. I love these words from Elder Jeffrey R. Holland. He said, believe in miracles, hope is never lost. 
If those miracles don't come soon or fully or seemingly at all, remember the Savior's own anguished example. If the bitter cup does not pass, drink it and be strong, trusting in happier days ahead. In my case, when it came to the miracle of selling our home, a man, for some reason, just wanted to buy our house. There were other identical houses to ours on our street selling for less money, but for some reason, he just wanted ours. Our, our realtor thought it was a miracle that not only that the home sold at our asking price, but that it appraised. The miracle concerning my job, well, that happened a little bit differently. I was full of confidence that as soon as I moved, my employer would say, well, you know, we actually do have a job for you in your new state, but that didn't happen. I lost my job. After eight years of full-time employment, it was scary to be without work during a time of economic difficulty. But God works in mysterious ways. Because I needed some money, I took on some side jobs that I would have never otherwise done. Those side jobs prepared me for the job I currently have. And to be honest with you, if I hadn't have lost my old job, I probably wouldn't have gotten my current job. I wanna connect this story to two patterns of peace that are found in the book of Hebrews. The author of Hebrews was writing to some people who faced very difficult circumstances. Let me read to you what a Roman historian wrote about this general time period. Christians were torn by dogs and perished, or were nailed to crosses, or were doomed to the flames and burnt. These people truly had reason to fear. But the author of the book of Hebrews wrote to them, and I believe to us, giving us two keys to overcome difficult times. Number one, stay confident. Number two, remember the miracles. So how can we maintain our confidence even in the midst of fear? In Hebrews chapter 10, I love this phrase, cast not away your confidence. How can we keep our confidence instead of casting it away? For me, one thing that's been really helpful is to gather together powerful scriptural phrases that give me peace and comfort. I electronically searched the scriptures for the words fear and afraid, and I gathered together all these powerful phrases like the righteous need not fear, or they that be with us are more than be with them. And I put them together in a document. Now, I failed art in sixth grade, but I just decided to give it a try. I turned those 30 into this little piece of artwork. You can see it in my book, The Founder of Our Peace. It wasn't about the artwork. What it was about is transferring all of these powerful scriptural phrases into something that I would remember and look at them by. You can do the same thing. Take your favorite one, five, 10, 20, 30 scriptural passages, passages that give you peace. And whether you have them in a document or you turn them into some artwork, have them where you can see them and they can remind you to cast not away your confidence. For me, this idea of collecting scriptures to help you in difficult times is something that I've been actually doing for years. When I was in fifth grade, a bully told me that he was gonna beat me up and I was so terrified and frightened. One of the things that actually helped me is this little document. You can see my fifth grade handwriting here, but I found a bunch of verses that gave me peace and comfort during this difficult time. Now, a second key from the author of the book of Hebrews is to remember the miracles. Right after telling us to cast not away our confidence, he goes to what I would call the greatest hits of faith. He mentions miracles that happened to Noah, to Enoch, to Abraham, to Moses, to Joshua, to many other people. And the whole point seems to be, look, if God did great miracles for them in the past, he's gonna do great miracles for you today. Trying to follow the author of the book of Hebrews, I made my own greatest hits of faith, where I wrote down miracles that I've seen in my life. In fact, the story that I shared with you earlier about being able to sell our home and how losing my job led to my current job are part of my greatest hits of faith. You can do the same thing in your life. You don't have to write out the whole story. Sometimes just three or four words are enough, but make a list of the miracles you've seen, your own greatest hits of faith, and then review those. And that will give you confidence that Jesus Christ is the founder of your peace. He's helped you before and he's gonna help you again. It's true that sometimes things don't work out the way we want them to. Things didn't work out for Lehi when his children didn't repent. Things didn't work out for Abinadi when he met an untimely death. You and I are gonna face some really difficult times and challenges. And let's be honest, sometimes we're gonna need some professional help to guide us through some very difficult times. I know that whatever our situation is, we can find greater peace and hope by trusting in our Heavenly Father and by focusing on Jesus Christ. He has said, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. He has said, I know thee by name. He has said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He is the founder of our peace. Thanks for joining me. My name is John Hilton, and this was my five minute fireside. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, are you feeling lucky? This could be your night. If you loved John Hilton's Fireside, just comment on this post for a chance to be entered to win one of his books. We'll be giving away three copies and you could be the lucky winner. Also, please be sure to tune in for more fun from Deseret Book Live. Until then, stay safe and stay healthy.